and his servant Moses. Well, because it was Moses that was a channel for the word of God that the Lord gave unto them. Because of that, they believed the Lord and they believed the servant of the Lord who had given them the word of the Lord. The Lord and his word, that's the object of our faith. Why should we make Christ? Why should we make the Lord? Why should we make God the object of our faith? In Numbers chapter 23. Numbers chapter 23. The reason why the Lord must be, must always be, the object of your faith. That you should never, never look away from the Lord. Here is the reason. Man will fail, but God will never fail. Man may disappoint, but God will never disappoint. And the words of men may become weak and unfulfilled. The words of God will always, always, ever be fulfilled. And it will be fulfilled in your life this year. Numbers chapter 23 verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. As he said, I shall he not do it. That's the object of our faith. As he said, I shall he not do it. Go back to the promise of God. Hold on to the promise of God. And tell your soul. And tell your mind. And tell your spirit. And tell your inner man. This is what the Lord has said. He has said, I will do this. I will do this. I will do that. And then you ask yourself, as he said, I shall he not do it. As he spoke in. And shall he not make it good? Will he not make it good? He'll make it good. That's why he is the object of our faith. What we see, no, that's not the object of our faith. How we feel, that's not the object of our faith. What we read in the newspapers or what we hear anywhere in the news, that's not the object of our faith. And whatever may be happening in the world today to the economy, we don't put our faith there. God is the object of our faith. As he said, and shall he not do it? As he spoke in, and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandment to bless. I have received commandment to bless. And he has blessed. And uh, tell me the rest. I cannot reverse it. That was Balaam talking to Balak. Balak had invited Balaam and had said, I hate the people of Israel. And I know you are powerful and mighty. I know that whoever you curse, the fellow is cursed. Whoever you bless, the fellow is blessed. So he said, come, I'll pay you whatever amount. If you will curse the children of Israel for me, so that I will be blessed, I'll pay you your fees. Maybe there are people that are telling you that somebody is trying to attack you or something. It will not hold. Yeah. That, that those fellows, anything they say, if they say they are going to bring down so and so, that fellow is down. In your own case, it will not stand. Balaam said, I have received commandment to bless. And the Almighty God has blessed. The God of heaven has blessed. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has blessed his people. And he said, I cannot reverse it. Nobody can reverse the blessing of God in your life in Jesus' name. And he has not beheld iniquity in Jacob. Neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is, his, is God. It's worth him. The Lord your God is with you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. And a shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He has a seat what the strength of an unicorn. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. There's no enchantment against you. Can you say that? There's no enchantment against can you say that again? I said say that again. There's no enchantment against you. And that should be the object of your faith. The almighty God himself. He said you are mine. I possess you. I hold you in my hand. 
I dwell with you. I dwell in you. You are my possession. And because of that, surely, certainly, there is no enchantment against you. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, watch as God wrought. The Lord will do it. Because you see here, we're looking at the Almighty God, and He is the object of our faith. Believe in your God, He will deliver you. Daniel chapter 6. Daniel chapter 6, we're looking at verse 23. In Daniel chapter 6, verse 23, Then was the king exceedingly glad for him. I will be glad for you. I'll be happy on your behalf. Your people be glad on your behalf in Jesus' name. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So was taken, so Daniel was taken out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him. Look at the rest of the verse. Because 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 he believed in his god who was the object of his faith god you always look at god don't look at those princes and presidents wanting to throw you into the lion's den don't even look at the den of the lions and don't look at the lions because that will be the object of fear but the almighty god the one with whom all things are possible. The one who has promised and he will not fail. That is the object of our faith. You believe in your God. And because you believe in that God, he will see us through. Acts of the Apostles chapter 27. The object of our faith. The Almighty God himself. The object of our faith. We're looking at Acts chapter 27 verse 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. Any storm around you, be of good cheer. Any difficulty you are going through, you will go through, you will not perish in that difficulty, be of good cheer. And at the end, is it dark and cloudy? Don't worry about the cloud and don't worry about the darkness because you can be of good cheer, cheer up because you are going through. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe who? You see that? That's the object of faith. That's the object of faith. Whatever the storm, whatever the difficulty, whatever the challenge, you must have an object of faith. And the greatest object of faith, the supreme object of faith, the never failing object of faith is our God. And look at all the miracles he has wrought. And look at what he has done for others. He has done things for others that are worse than you, that are smaller than you. He has done things even for sinners. Even for backsliders. And you are not a backslider. Give me a good amen. Yeah. And if he has done something for even the people that waver in their faith. I about you believing on the almighty God. And God is your father. And God is your God. Is your creator. Is your redeemer. He will do this one for you. Yeah. This year will be a year of the fulfillment of the promise of God in Jesus name. Yeah. Wherefore sirs be of good cheer. For I believe God that it shall be, it shall be, as it was told me, it will be in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. The object of our faith is the Almighty God. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18. In Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18, that by two immutable things, in which it was impossible for God to lie. Impossible for God to lie. God will never deceive us. If he said, I will heal you, he will heal you. If he said, I'll preserve your life, he'll preserve your life. If he said, I will bless you, he will bless you. If he said, I will satisfy you. I will saturate your life with my blessing. I will supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. He will never lie. He will do it. Wherefore, it says, it says there, by two immutable things, in the which it was impossible for God to lie, we might have a strong consolation. What kind of consolation do we have? 
weak consolation, unstable consolation, wavering consolation. What kind of consolation? A strong consolation, he said, who have fled for refuge to lay hold upon the hope that is set before us. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. God is the object of our faith. I will skip that before you and keep his word before you. I know that what he has said, that he will do. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. But without faith, it's impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. That's why we're making his word our refuge. His word, the solid rock, the word on which we stand. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13. For this cause also, thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which he heard of us, ye received it not as the word of men. That's the secret. That is the secret. Ye received the word not as the words of men. When Joshua came to the children of Israel and said, you see all these Jericho walls, everything will come down. They didn't look at that as the word of Joshua. The Lord had told him that that's exactly what will happen. And that they will not need to fight. The battle belongs to the Lord. They didn't accept that as the word of Joshua. It was the word of the Lord. They were not looking at Joshua as if Joshua was the object of their faith. But the Almighty God was the object of their faith. They received the word. And when, they, when Joshua said, all these six days, you'll go around. You will not say a word. You will not utter any sentence until the seventh day you'll come around the Jericho wall seven times. And then at the end of seven times, you'll shout. Did he take that as the word of Joshua or the word of a man? They took that as the word of God. What you are hearing today, every statement you hear, every promise you hear, everything we're reading out of the Bible, everything the Lord is covenanting with you today is not the word of a preacher. In the word of the Almighty God. And because you have that in your mind, and you say, This is the word of the Almighty God, and I accept it. I said, You accept it. And I believe it. And I receive it. It will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus' name. It says, You received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually walketh also. In you that believe this word will work in your life. Number one, the great object of faith. Number two, the gracious obedience of faith. The gracious obedience of faith. We're coming to Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 10. Joshua chapter 6, verse 10. And Joshua had commanded the people, saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. Neither shall any word, any word, any word proceed out of your mouth. Until the day I bid you shout, then ye shall shout. I want you to notice that looks very simple. Yes, it is simple. The word of God that leads us into having a miracle is always very simple, always very direct. And anyone can easily obey. And as we look at this, we can say, it's very simple, it's straightforward. All he said is, you will not make any noise. You will not utter any word. Nothing will proceed out of your mouth. You'll keep your mouth shut until I say, shout. On the one hand, it's easy. Why did the Lord tell them to do this at this time? That you will not say anything. 
I want to remind you, the major problem of the children of Israel in the wilderness was the problem of the tongue. The problem of the tongue. They are always saying something wrong. They are always saying, why did you bring us here? We're going to die in this wilderness. Ourselves, our wives, our children will perish in the wilderness. They are always saying, the difficulties are great. The walls are high. The giants, they are the sons of the Anakim. They were always saying, we look like grasshoppers in our own sight. And the Lord said, now, we are out of the wilderness. Are we out of the wilderness? Wilderness talk must stop. Wilderness discussion must stop. And wilderness thought and wilderness talk and wilderness ideas must come to an end. This is a new period. It's a new era. It's a new dispensation. And because of that, everything we said in the old dispensation, everything we said with our old mind, all those old ideas, we're going to bury everything today. We will not say what we used to say. We will not think the way we used to think. And we will not sing the bad songs we used to sing. It's an old, it's a, it's, a, it's a rough way, it's a rough valley, sometimes in the dungeon and sometimes on the mountain. It's not an easy road. Those old songs, I'm not going to sing them anymore. I said I'm not going to sing them anymore. You know, I want to try, I want to get there. I cannot get there. The Lord never answers my prayer. He answers the prayers of other people. I don't know what I've done. Even if I've committed sin, oh God, why don't you forgive me? I'm not going to say that anymore. I said, I'm not going to say that anymore. He said, we should close our mouths, shut up. And not say what you used to say in the wilderness. The wilderness life was a life of murmuring. A life of complaining, a life of grumbling, it was a life of rebellion. And they always express that rebellion with their mouth. And the Lord said, I'm going to put you to test. That now, look at those Jericho walls and don't ever mention the wall in your mouth. And look at how high they are. Don't ever measure it. And don't ever tell your neighbor how high the wall is. And look at how thick the wall is. And don't you ever mention the thickness of the wall. Just keep quiet because God is at work. I said God is at work. While the message is coming to you today, God is at work already. It's working in your spirit, in your soul, in your mind. It's working in your body. It's working in your place of work. It's turning everything around. You get to the place of work tomorrow, everything has turned around. Because while you are just quite meditating upon the watch of God, and then you are going to shout when he tells you to shout, and then you will know the walls will come down in Jesus' name. Look at verse 14. And the second day, they compassed the city once and returned into the camp. So did they six days. This is an obedient congregation, obedient generation. That's the kind of generation we are from today. Obedient to the word of the Lord. Gracious obedience of faith. They believe that if they will just control themselves and not mention Satan, not mention demon. Not mention the people of Jericho, not mention the giants, not mention difficulty, not mention anything. Just keep quiet and just walk around in faith and walk around your Jericho walls in faith. And not, if, even though you see the Jericho walls, you see but you don't see. You see the Almighty God. You look at the visible, but you see the invisible. And you're not seeing anything at all. All you know in your heart is, I have got the victory already. I've got the victory already. I said, I've got the victory already. And so they went around six days, once a day, never saying anything. And while they were walking around, God was doing the work for them. And while you're walking around in faith, believing the Lord and having great expectation, the Lord is walking your life in Jesus' name. In verse 15, and it came to pass on the seventh day, 
that arose early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times. Only on that day they compassed the city seven times and it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpet uh, the trumpet Joshua said unto the people, what? Joshua said, Joshua said, wait for the word to come. And when the word comes, do as the word has said. Joshua said, shout, the Lord has given you the city. I want to tell the Lord has given you the blessing. The obedience of faith, obedience of faith. That's what will get us through. That's what will make us to cross over. The obedience of faith. That's what he did. Joshua told them. And he said, this is exactly what you do. And you're going to have the victory. Don't think like you used to think. Don't talk like you used to talk. And don't say what you used to say. Don't even think and meditate the way you used to meditate. Now, because a new day, a new era, and a new year 